Hello everyone and welcome to this long dark video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the handheld shortwave radio that just got added in Tales from the Far Territory Part 2. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the Forsaken Airfield. Any PC players probably have a save here or they know how to get here. But if you're a console player and you just got Part 1 of Tales from the Far Territory then you might need to search up a tutorial on how to get here. But anyway, once you get here, you're going to want to head over to the airfield. And then you're going to want to get to this building right here, the control tower. And next, you're going to want to climb to the very top. Because at the top will be the handheld shortwave radio. As you can see, there it is right there. There's also some notes up here. Pause if you want to read this note. And then you unlock the handheld shortwave radio. It's important to note that this thing weighs nothing and it also, you can't drop it. So don't worry about losing it or don't worry about it taking up a lot of inventory space because it doesn't weigh anything. And also you'll notice that it's not powered on right now currently because it is not during an aurora or if you're in the forsaken airfield you can also use the electrostatic fog to power it on during the daytime so in any region you'll have to wait for the aurora but in the forsaken airfield you can also use this thing occasionally during the day when the glimmer fog rolls in so yeah guys that is how you use it but even if you get it powered up you still cannot actually use it to track down anything unless you are in range of a active transmitter now these are transmitters right here one second this is a transmitter right here you can open them up they are found in six different regions in the game one of them is sitting right here and you are going to need to fix them in order to use the handheld shortwave radio and these require a variety of different items to fix one of those items is five scrap metal and I have it right here another item is a car battery you're gonna need that then you're also gonna need two new items those items are two wires and three replacement fuses don't worry if you get to this area and you don't have the this. correct pieces because Right here, as you just saw, there's a lot of the items you need, like the car battery was right there. There was metal, there was fuses, there was wires, all in this building. So this is kind of a tutorial spot. At least on Voyager, you can find the stuff you need right here. But on higher difficulties, like Stalker and Interloper, you might have to get those pieces from other spots, which, especially for the car battery, will be quite annoying because it weighs 15 kilograms anyway once you've got the correct stuff you're gonna wanna place in your car battery then you're gonna need five scrap metal and by the way these animations are very cool in my opinion I love when the game adds in animations instead of just having, for example, you click on it and then it takes 20 minutes or so, and there's not really any animations. So yeah, and also I'm pretty sure in the future they will be adding harvest animations for when you're harvesting a deer or a, or when you're chopping down wood, so I'm very excited for that. And next you're going to need... Three replacement fuses, let's put those in. One, two, three. Then you're going to want to place in your two wires. Let's get those in. And now the final step to getting this thing working is just to switch it on. So let's turn it on. And close it up. And now the transmitter is operational. Now you just need a Aurora or Glimmer Fog. So let me just sleep and I'll bring you back in a second. 
As you can see now, it's now an Aurora, and once I take out this handheld shortwave, you will notice it's powered on. There's two different modes, the blue mode and the orange mode. The blue mode is for tracking down bunkers relating to the signal void tail. This tail is basically a giant mission that you can do in survival mode. And as you track down these different bunkers, you'll find out more about the island of Great Bear. And you'll also get unique loot items. But it's also important to note that in Interloper, you cannot do this tail. So you can ignore the blue mode simply because some of the loot items you get from doing the tail would not be compatible with the hardcore interloper experience so you can ignore the blue mode in interloper but in all difficulties you can use this orange mode which will bring you to either transponder caches or the location of downed aircrafts so I will be showing you how to use this mode in this video I will eventually get around to making a video about doing the tail but for right now I'm going to show you how to locate a transponder cache once you're in range of a active transmitter that has been repaired you can find out which transmitters you found in the journal in this section as you can see this one I've repaired and it has range over all the far territory so anytime I'm in range of this transmitter right here and it's during an aurora or an electrostatic fog event you can use this electro you can use this handheld shortwave so let me show you how to actually use this thing there's two different things to keep in mind when you're using it one is the blinking button on the side and the other is the dial on the screen the blinking button will blink the closer you are to a transponder cache or a unfamiliar downed aircraft and it'll also change the noise of the blinking depending on if you're looking in the right direction of it or if you're looking away from it and then the other thing to keep in mind is the dial on the side the farther it is to the right the more you're looking in the correct direction so if I look this way it goes to the left and that means I'm not looking in the right direction but if it goes to the right it means I am looking in the right direction and as you can tell the blinking is getting faster and the dial is telling me I'm looking in the correct direction you can hear that blinking getting faster also I want to say that I've recorded this video a few times already and in those other previous attempts I have found the transponder cache in the same exact spot so I think it's has the exact same spawn points but that doesn't mean you can really find these without using the handheld shortwave radio because they are buried in the snow so you need it to locate the exact location so that dial is telling me this is the correct direction it's blinking the fastest when I look here pay attention to that noise when I look away the noise is different and the dial is on the left side but when I look in the right direction, it's making the correct noise and the dial is furthest to the left. Once you get really close like I am right now, just look at the ground and eventually you should get a prompt to uncover. Okay, I'm looking in the wrong direction. There it is. You'll get a prompt to uncover a cache. You'll hold X and boom, then your transponder, then your handheld shortwave will lose its signal and you'll have found the transponder cache or the tail bunker or the aircraft whatever you were looking for and then you can open this thing up now it's important to know I am in Voyager mode so anything that you get in this thing will depend on the difficulty and it'll also be random in those other attempts in those other two attempts I did get different loot so even if it's in the same spot it will have different loot randomly and this is in Voyager, so I'm getting one flare shell, one flare, one marine flare, a flashlight, a second flare, a second marine flare, a third marine flare, and that's it. So not the best loot, but it's pretty good for free loot. It's very fun to track these down anytime there's an aurora or glimmer fog. So yeah, guys, I really like this feature, and I will be posting a video about the tail, so stay tuned for that. And also, I'll probably make some short videos about just tracking down different caches so you can see what loot you can expect to find in them. 
So yeah, guys, I really do like this feature. It definitely makes the Forsaken Airfield a better region to go to because as a console player, I wasn't able to go there before in the Forsaken Airfield, but going off other people's opinions, other people have said you don't really need to go here. It's kind of an option. There's a forge here. You can find noisemakers in the main hangar, and there's a few other gear items and interesting things you can find, but it's not necessary to go here. Now, after part two dropped, you will want to mark this down as a region to go to since this is the location where you find the handheld shortwave. And it's also where you find the transmitter that has the that has range over all the far territory. So once those other regions come out, you will need to repair this transmitter to use the handheld shortwave in those other regions. So yeah, guys. This is an amazing feature, great way to find new loot, great addition to making this region more impactful and more of a great place to visit. And yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe for future Long Dark content about, for example, the acorns or fire hardened arrows. I will be making videos about those. So yeah, stay tuned for those, stay tuned for the video about the tails, and goodbye everyone.